Welcome to EPAX 3D. My name is Jesus. Today we'll be taking you through the tutorial for installing the 5K upgrade on our E10. And this upgrade will also be applicable to the X10, but you'll have a slightly different part. So first things first, we're going to go through just unboxing of the 5K kit, make sure everything is in here. So, right on top, we have our new 10.1 inch 5K screen bracket. You'll have your new 10.1 inch tape. And then down here, you'll have the glorious 5K screen, screen cable, and the new mainboard with the new mainboard bracket. All right, so now that we have everything laid out across our table here, we're gonna go ahead and start this. First things first, we're going to be starting with the screen, taking it out. So for this, we're gonna need a 2.5 millimeter allen key and I'm just gonna just like the diffuser film kind of peel up the corners a bit unscrew each of these screws I'm gonna carefully lift up kind of away so we can get to the screen cable. And, oh. like that. and then I'm just gonna detach the screen cable so we can just go ahead and remove everything here. And then this just pops up like that. Easy enough. Now we're going to put the printer on its back and we're going to go ahead and take out the main board and the bracket so we can install this. And we're going to save the screen installation for last. Alright, so now that we've got the printer on its back, we've already went ahead and removed the bottom panel. Just use a 3mm uh, driver to take off these 8 screws going around. So now we have the bottom panel. We're going to disconnect everything from the main board. So first I'm going to start with the cables, just these little foam pieces, sticky foam pads. Oh, I've got stuck on the touch cable too. I'm going to just take these off. This, this clip should pop up just like before. And touch screen cable, just a slide lock, so these two tabs. On either side, you're just going to want to push up. It should just come out pretty easily. Just move that to the side. All right, so these connections all here are going to have this red glue on them, mainly just to keep them secure during shipping. So some of these can be pulled out just like this, but for the most part, you're probably going to end up needing to take a small knife or something just to get this red glue off. You might be able to just use your fingernail, but I'm just gonna quickly pry it off. Luckily, most of it comes off as just a single piece. So, it should be easy to get off, except for this part. Yep. There we go. Cool. Now we can just unhook all of these. You might want to keep track of each of these Phoenix connectors and which plug they go into. You can see they're marked up here. The power input, LED, LED fan, and the chassis fans. All right, so we got everything unhooked from the main board. And we're not actually gonna unscrew the main board because we're unscrewing this whole bracket. So what we do need to do is we're going to need to snip this zip tie to make sure this LED driver cable is free. And we're going to take off the LED driver. And then the screws on this side are what is holding this bracket up right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Sweet. Then you're going to use a 2.5 millimeter key for this and for both sets of screws. Now 
we got that board off. I'm gonna go ahead and take off these three screws here. Make sure you keep a hold of all your screws. Definitely gonna need them. Cool. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and, and install this new bracket. Uh, this new bracket is designed for the new Cheetah mainboard, but there's also some posts in case you wanna switch back to the old 4K mainboard and use your old 4K screen, uh, just so you don't have to switch out the whole bracket again. And we can go ahead and reinstall the driver board. Cool. So now that we have all of our hardware mounted, we can go ahead and start making some connections with these cables. So first things first, I'm just going to show you where all the cables go. So starting up here in the top left, you're going to have your Z minus terminal, this one right here. And that's going to be this three prong connector here. And then just to the right of that, it's going to be your Z motor. It's going to be your four prong connector. And then you're going to have this hot terminal here. You don't want to plug into anything into that. You want to just leave this bare. So skip these two prongs and move on to your chassis fans, which is labeled as uh, MB-F+. And then that's going to be this cable here. So you can see it has the four cords here. And you're going to move on to your LED fan, which is going to be this big fan right here. And that's going to be this one, which is going to have the two thin cords. And then you're going to move on to your LED, which is going to be this cord coming from your LED driver board. And then lastly, you have your power input, which is going to be this last cord right here. going, And that's going to be coming straight from your power supply here. And then of course you have your touchscreen cable, your screen cable, USB, and Ethernet. Now, we... In, in our machine, the cable management from the factory does not actually allow us to move this Z motor uh, all the way up top. So we're going to have to make some slack there. So what we're going to do for the sake of this is we're just going to unscrew this little, what's that called? Little plastic piece holding the cables, cable guide. That way we can just get everything plugged in. So, do that. Make sure that's in the right spot. screen cable in. You're probably going to want to use some sort of foam pad somewhere around here so you can kind of holster this cable somewhere otherwise it's just going to get loose and it might, uh, it might come out a bit too far. So just a quick note uh, when we pulled off this little plastic tab here for cable for to allow a bit more slack so we can actually reach the Z motor cable up here uh, What we're gonna do is just to alleviate so we don't have to go through a ton of you know zip ties and cable management Is we're just cut this zip tie that was right here yeah, right there and That actually allows us to have enough slack so we can just go ahead and put this little plastic tab back on without having to redo everything. Alright, so now we're going to finish up the installation by installing the screen. So first things first, we're going to take our screen bracket and we're going to apply some double-sided tape to these parts of the bracket here. And you're going to want to do this so that when you install the screen, it stays in place when you're printing. You don't want your screen kind of like moving up and down, possibly due to the suction from printing. So this just keeps it nice and stable. You can also use 
uh, UV glue, just a little bit of it. Make sure you're only getting it on the edges though, because you don't want to block anything getting into the screen itself. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take all these little red pieces off. So just a quick side note, uh, we, we already did the screen install, but this will go before you redo the screen install, just so you guys are aware. Uh, so we're gonna look, take a look at this, the screen from side on. So you can see there's two layers on the screen, you have this thick glass right here, and then you have the LCD that's on top. When you install your screen, you want to make sure that this is on the bottom, or the, the glass is on the bottom, I should say. Because if you install it upside down, you're going to have a lot of bloating, and you're going to have a lot of issues, and you may not know where they're coming from. So, just make sure, glass on the bottom, LCD. So we went ahead and removed all the little red pieces from the double-sided tape revealing the sticky, sticky side. Now you want to grab your ever-elusive 5K screen. Make sure you hold it tight so it doesn't time travel two months into the future. And we're going to go ahead and take off all these parts, or these little screen protectors. These are, these are the ones mainly meant for shipping. You should still have one on close to the screen here uh, for your one-time resin protection. We're going to go ahead and take the cable and you're going to want to make sure that you install the cable this side up. So you can see there's going to be this side and this side. This side's a bit more flat. So this side's going to be facing up away from the pins or the PCB here. I'm just going to slide that in. Lock the latch down. Cool. We're going to very carefully slide this into the bracket. Cool. All right. And you want to make sure you press it down just a bit firmly so it really sticks to that tape. You'll get a couple fingerprints, but you can just wipe those off. And then you can go ahead and get the screen in like so. Now this cable does have a bit of a... It's very stiff, so you might want to actually curve it a bit like this oh, before you put it in. that I almost break the screen. There we go. Cool. And then we get to screw in these four screws and we're gonna flip it back on its uh, back and plug in the screen cable. So. All right, so now that we have the machine on its back, we're we'll going ahead and just install this screen, mm, screen cable. So you're going to make sure this blue side is facing up. If you have this pin side facing up, then you've either installed the screen cable backwards on the screen, or upside down I should say, or your screen is upside down. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in here, and close this latch, huh. and there's a little foam, there it is. Just put the foam piece on it just to keep it nice and secure. And we should be good to go. So from there, we can just put the bottom panel back on. If you, have, if you haven't managed your cables yet, go ahead and do that. Um, and then you're gonna wanna apply the screen tape, of course, on your new screen. Yeah, that should be it. All right, thank you everyone. If you have any questions, uh, you can always email us at support at epax3d.com. And we'll see you next time.